the storyboard, I'm Shabani Gharat. Home to renowned alcohol beverage brands such as Absolute Vodka, Jacob's Creek, Shivas Regal, Ballantines, the Glenlivet, Pono Record India has one of the most dynamic and premium portfolios in the industry and it is planning to continue its premiumization drive. The company will also focus on innovation in the existing portfolio of brands, introduce premium global innovations to India and drive consumer experiences. So what else is in store for 2023? How is the company leveraging industry trends and how are they tapping into the fresh batch of young consumers entering the alcohol drink? Drinking age, we are getting these answers from Karthik Mohindra, Chief Marketing Officer, Perno Record, India. Karthik, welcome to CNBC TV 18. Thank you, Shabani. Karthik, first, uh, tell me how has the past uh, year been like for Perno and going forward, what is the strategy that you're going to apply for the India market? Ever since the pandemic ended, uh, uh, the business has bounced back phenomenally well, is doing uh, uh, it's wonderful growth it's all around. We as a company are doing exceptionally well. So yeah, uh, the year's been good. We're looking at closing on a high. And um, when it comes to the future, uh, you know, India remains the one of the biggest and the fastest growing markets in the world for Group Bruno Ricard. Uh, we know the macroeconomic factors, uh, the economy, the way it is, the the younger audiences that we have, uh, it's just, just going to make for long-term sustainable growth. So as an, as an organization, we're betting big on India. Oh, great. And uh, since you mentioned, uh, you know, like uh, the younger generation and India is a young country, there are many who are entering the legal drinking age. Uh, if you can share with us, what are their preferences and some of the trends that you have witnessed as a company? Um, uh, well, Rightfully said, there are about 22 to 23 million young Indians who enter legal drinking age every year. And this, this, uh, this number is likely to continue for at least for the next five to eight years. I, I'd like to call these, these, this generation as being extremely confident. They are global citizens. Right? Uh, they, they, don't, they don't feel uh, by any way lesser than their counterparts across the world. It just becomes so smaller. And um, they also don't have any uh, you know, preconceived notions about anything. So they want to work hard. They also want to party hard. They want to enjoy, savor, all the finer things in life. So as far as we are concerned, uh, but, but also, uh, you know, there's uh, although 22 million, uh, so that there's also a very wide let's say, range of preferences that would exist, right? They experimented it. They don't want to be bogged down with one particular flavor or one particular way of consumption. And they very freely and very easily oscillate between categories and flavors, right? So uh, today, you know, we had been, you know, if I was to look back to 15 years or 20 years, whiskey was the be all and the end all. But it's not, it's not true today. Uh, the younger consumers, uh, I'm equally comfortable having a whiskey or a white spirit. Gin is booming in the urban centers. You see tequila is on the rise. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a much wider palette. Makes life, makes life a lot difficult for us at times. Uh, so consumers have a wider choice now. Their preferences are changing, it's, uh, you know, which we have seen noticeably over the past a couple of years, then there are these spate of uh, newer players who are entering the alcohol beverage market. And then there are these well entrenched established players already present in uh, the India market. So how do you look at this whole environment and the whole dynamics? Highly competitive, one must say, and you're absolutely correct. I think uh, craft is in. Uh, innovation is in, like I mentioned, and there are a lot of entrepreneurs uh, out there who are really challenging the norm. And what that's doing is it's keeping a lot of the, let's say, entrenched or traditional players on the toes. Uh, so which, which, which is great. And, you know, um, you know we, we, I mean, if you really ask from my point of view, it's very important that entrenched players or market leading players like us are always on top of our game to be able to meet these competitor demands that are posed on our business. But equally, um, I think collectively, 
what we are doing is we're also changing the landscape of the business in India, mm. right? So the more the players that go after it, the better the output for the industry as a whole. Mm. So there's a, there are there are benefits in there as well. What doesn't really need to because there's massive room for growth, massive room for growth, right? Also, Karthik, I have seen that uh, Perno has uh, actively focused on premiumization uh, of the company's portfolio. So, how is uh, this entire premiumization drive working for you? Oh, working very well. One of the biggest current uh, headwinds that the industry faces is uh, severe inflation in COGS, right? which has to be offset. And uh, so, it, We've been very actively driving uh, premiumization because that's really how our business is built. That's a bedrock of sustainable, profitable business. We've always followed that uh, here in India. We do not, let's say, participate in categories which have a very low margin threshold. Uh, we've Since inception in India, we've not entered those categories. We prefer to play in the profitable, in the long-term potential uh, categories. But even within the wide portfolio that we have, there is a conscious effort for the organizational energy and investments to go behind categories that allow for greater premiumization, for us to have a greater value uh, for the brands, but then also be able to give back to the consumer to be able to experience or get a better output of what you know, we have on offer. Uh, so if I take the last year as an example, um, our volume growths would have been high single digit, but our turnover is almost twice that, right? Which again indicates that not only are we focusing towards the top end, but also that's where the Indian market and the Indian consumers are going towards. It's, it's, it's about more self-fulfillment now, not simply uh, what, let's say, the predecessors used to be about. Yeah. Uh, Karthik, I must ask you as a marketer, uh, you know, for Alco beverages, what is the biggest challenge that you're facing? It's the input cost inflation, which is, which has been uh, quite challenging uh, in the last uh, 12 to 18 months and doesn't really seem to be abating uh, in, in the near future. Right? So that will always remain, um, you know, a, a, a big uh, pressure on profitability. And like I said, as an organization being so focused towards the bottom line, uh, what it means is that we have to find ways to make sure our profitability trajectory remains where it is. But also at the same time, yeah, so while premiumization is a reality, but when uh, organizations or manufacturers have to pass on the cost, input cost pressures to maintain thresholds of profitability, which Perno Ricard is very, very conscious about, that sometimes coupled with uh, taxation increases by by states tends to uh, you know take pricing beyond let's say what the consumer is sometimes comfortable of, of spending so uh, it, it's a bit of a mixed bag at times but but that's part of life it is time for a short break. On the other side, we have Lance Bennett, the new VP of Sales and Marketing at Mercedes-Benz India, who's speaking to us about how Mercedes is shaping its marketing strategies for the future.